you've ever wondered about the Hakko irons, we've got the light duty, the Hakko 503, and the heavy duty, the Hakko FX601. Let's do a comparison today, put them head to head, and see how they perform. <laughs> So on our left is the Hakko 503 model, good for basic electronics, speaker wire and small components. And to our right, we've got the Hakko FX601, ideal for large components, battery terminals, and stained glass. The 503 is around $15 and this is about $75. So just keep in mind the prices between the two and what your expectations are for what these irons can perform. We'll see how much we can push this one to see if we can get some good decent stained glass work with it. So it's got a little stand, a um, little plastic stand here for the iron. It does not have temperature control. You plug this straight in to the wall into your power. Decent size. It's very lightweight. Let's put that there for now. This one here is a used iron. That's the only one that I've got. Unfortunately, I don't have a new one to test. So I've got a stand that I'm using for the the Hakko. Uh, this one slips in right there and you just plug in your iron and it's got the brass coils. This is so much nicer than using a regular sponge. Uh, typically you would have a sponge. I'm bringing you this old stand that I have um, so you wet that and once you're done soldering and you're trying to clean the tips, you just wipe it off on the sponge. Uh, you do need something to wipe the tips as you're working. Um, so the sponge is a great start, um, like I did before, until I found out about the brass coils. I upgraded to this. It's not that much more, but um, it just saves a lot more time. It's less messy. Um, it works the same way. I actually like it better. Dip in the tip right into the coils and it cleans it off and you don't lose as much of the heat. So that's kind of my take on the differences between these two, the sponge versus the coils. Get the coils if you can, otherwise the wet sponge will be just fine. And for the sake of time, let's get some scraps we can play with. Here we go, scraps. Once in a while, we get to use the carburetor stone. Pretty nice. Just file that down. Maybe a little sailboat right there. I don't know. Looks like it could be something. All right, sailboat. That's what we're going with. Nope. Okay, this is getting. Oh, this looks like a boat already. Gotta make it work. All right, let's wrap this up. Okay, so we got the 6040. We're gonna be using the exact same solder. So the yellow will be the Hakko 503, and then the right one with the red and blue will go with the FX601. Do a little dab of flux. So the red Hakko 503 uh, has no temperature control. You plug it in and you're going with the temp setting that it has been set at, um, whatever this iron is set at. This is a 60 watt iron. Let's see how this accepts the solder. So I have to wait a lot longer for this to heat up. Normally the Hakko FX601 here is already going and ready. Let's try this one out. We're gonna just melt a little bit right there. And we're gonna do a dab. 
to seal it in. And it's all connected. Now this one's starting to heat up. You can actually see some of the smoke already burning. Hopefully it is ready and hot enough. Okay, it is accepting. Now I've got some solder right there and we're just gonna do a dab where we added that flux. Put some flux on here, we'll add that last dab. There we go. So far, no problems on it. It just took a little while longer for this one to start heating up um, to get up to temperature. So we plugged them in at the same time and the FX601 uh, heated up much faster right away and we were able to get going with it. But here comes the fun part. We're just gonna try to add uh, solder to the rest of it just on this top surface and let's see how that goes. And it's melting the solder fine, so as long as it's getting solder onto the iron, I think you should be good. And you also want to move quickly still, I don't know um, how hot this is. It seems to be working fine. So you just... Okay, we'll leave that for now and come back. We don't want to overheat anything so far. Let's go on to this side. Okay, um, the Hako FX601 is a lot hotter, so when I smooth uh, the beads down, everything is starting to melt together, so there's less lumpiness um, that I can feel. This one, when we add the solder, um, it tends to cool down quickly, so I, c I didn't feel like I could stay on there as much um, to get the smooth beads. But let's try it out, and maybe um, the second time would work a little bit better. Actually, I'm just gonna concentrate on these two main lines here. So I just wanna add some more. Yep, that's totally fine. All right, that was good. Smooth out the bead lines here. Let's let that cool and I can show you how it looks. I think it looks really good. The lines came out pretty nice. It looks pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy with the soldering. And this one here, it's really hard to tell the difference right now. If you were to compare the two, I think they're pretty much equivalent right now. Let's turn it over.
that was good. I think there's really not much of a difference if you take a look. It's coming out quite nice, even with that cheaper uh, soldering iron. I'm really happy with it. Um, it works great. Let's get the sides. Forgot we already got solder. Gonna move quickly. I think that one is done. See how it's lumpy over here? You can just drag, move it around like that, and see what you guys think between these two. I don't think you can. Hardly tell which one was better. So, I think they both came out quite nice. Even the uh, cheaper iron, which I wasn't expecting it to perform as great, um, it actually did a very good job, in my opinion. Um, I thought it did actually much better of a job uh, than I expected, so I'm thoroughly impressed with that $15 iron. So for me, the Hako 503 um, actually is a wonderful iron at $15. Um, I can see myself doing a couple more of these with no issues. The Hako FX601, um, the grip is more comfortable and the length of the tip uh, rod here is shorter to use, so it feels you have a little bit more control um, where you're getting in there with the glass versus the other one where it just feels like it's so long and far away so when you're handling it it's almost like it's like writing on a paper with an extra long pencil that you don't need to be using that's kind of how it feels but otherwise uh, as you can see it works just fine with the soldering and this Hakko FX601 you can actually uh, change the temperature. The dial is right here on the handle. So I think in conclusion, this one is a great value for what it is. And you can start off with this, no problems at all. And you will be able to make some projects right away and get things going, start making those feathers or whatever small projects that you have. And the one on the right just gives you a much smoother feeling um, as you're soldering. If you're tight on budget, I would lean towards the cheaper one, of course. When you're doing bigger projects or you're doing a lot more projects, then you would probably consider um, jumping into the Hotco FX601.